Welcome to the Susa Valley in northern Italy, a picturesque mountain region close to the border with France. Life here is quiet, peaceful and easygoing, but below ground one of Europe's biggest construction projects is gathering pace. In just a few years, a massive high-speed railway will pass through here as part of the new Trans-European Transport Network. But there's one little problem standing in the way, a massive mountain range. To conquer this terrain, construction crews are having to dig deep, tunnelling further than ever before. But the schemes faced heavy opposition and some pretty huge challenges. This is how the world's longest rail tunnel is being built, right through the middle of the Alps. If you want to travel between two of the biggest cities in France and Italy, then it might look quite simple at first. They're only separated by a few hundred kilometres. But in reality, the train takes around four hours to cross the mountains. Much of the long and winding route was constructed centuries ago, and according to some, it no longer meets international standards. The Freyjus Tunnel has been around since 1871, but today it's simply not wide enough. There's only a single tube, and the line was built on a slope, so trains are using more energy than they would on a flatter surface. Because the original like lines that uses these passes, like the Brenner, the Simplon, the uh, Gotthard, and uh, the Fréjus are lines that were built in the late 19th, mid, late 19th, early 20th century, and they were built to a different standard and grade. So they were mountain lines. So they have steep grades, and sometimes they are not suitable for modern freight traffic. And yet, despite its downsides, many people still have a soft spot for this historic piece of infrastructure, which was upgraded for modern trains back in the 2000s. At the time of its unveiling, it became the world's longest rail tunnel, where techniques like pneumatic drilling and dynamite excavation were pioneered. But over time, the line has seen a lot less use, and now it's having to make way for something much bigger. Since 2013, work's been underway on the Trans-European Transport Network, a huge web of new and upgraded transport links all over Europe. There are nine main routes in total, including the giant ScanMed corridor running all the way from Finland right down to Malta. Now, I know, we've covered that already. It's where the Fimon Belt fixed link and the Brenner Base Tunnel, a 55km railway through the Alps, are all under construction. But to complete the 3,000km Mediterranean corridor, which goes from east to west and connects Hungary to Spain, an even larger hole is needed. The Mont Cenis Base Tunnel. It's the main engineering section of this new rail link between Lyon and Turin, which has been talked about since 1990. At 57.5 kilometres, it will take the title of world's longest single rail tunnel when finished, barely beating Brenner and the Gotthard base tunnel, which completed in 2016. Cleverly called the Lyon Turin line, it will use modern methods of construction to go much deeper underground than the current railway, meaning no uphill climbs and a more direct route but it also means tunnelling through a lot more mountainous rock. That's the reason it's called a base tunnel, because instead of like gaining height, like going out of the valley and trying to get the shortest point possible to go across the mountain, the stiffness of your line has to be very low. Of course, you have to be in the base of the mountain. So your tunnel gets, instead of 13, it gets 50, 55, 60 kilometres, as most of these base tunnels are. Built for passengers and freight, it'll stretch for over 270 kilometres in total, with 70% of the line in France and the other 30% in Italy. Construction and management of the cross-border section is being handled by the Tunnel Europan Lyon Turin, or TELT, co-owned by the French and Italian governments. There's a joint approach to the funding too. The whole line is set to cost around $27 billion, with $9 billion going on the main tunnel. 40% of the money is coming from the EU, with Italy putting in 35% and France the remaining 25%. Not only is the new line a key link in the European network, it promises big environmental benefits. Once operational, the railway is predicted to take over a million trucks off the road, which would reduce CO2 emissions by 3 million tonnes a year. Then there's the time saving. It'll knock two hours off the current travel time between the two cities. With the new tunnel, it's fair to say that technology has moved on a bit, but for a lot of the work being done so far, the idea is actually quite similar. 
To get through areas of particularly hard ground, construction teams are still using the traditional drill and blast approach. This involves a combination of large drilling machines that carve their way through the rock and good old fashioned explosives. But of course, on a 21st century mega project like this, newer methods are being implemented too, including massive tunnel boring machines or TBMs. So you cannot really use one only method of excavation. You cannot have a proper knowledge of what's underground because you cannot do this normal coring and sampling you do for like subways, where you just go on the surface, you do some sampling down the ground along the uh, route that your subway will take, that would go like 15, 20 meters below the ground. What they do is this like exploratory tunnel. So a lot of this work has been done. And this is to, to know what's inside. I mean, you have to dig before you dig. <laughs> Of the 162 kilometers of underground sections that need to be built overall, including all the access tunnels and shafts, around a fifth have been completed, with much of that construction work done between 2015 and 2019. For a while after that, not a great deal happened, partly due to the pandemic, and it hadn't been decided which companies would be carrying out the remaining work. That was until 2021, when three massive contracts were signed, but only in France. Now, the entry portal and the main tunnel are underway. The plan for completing the construction works over in Italy is due to be announced sometime in 2023. On the base tunnel itself, there's quite a long way to go. Only just over 10 kilometers has been completed in one direction on the French site. That was done using a TBM fantastically called Federica, which spent three years burrowing through the mountain's most complex geology. Once finished, it was taken apart and removed through one of the shafts that had been built earlier. A further seven TBMs are going to be used on the rest of the project. Now, to create a tunnel like this, it's not all about digging horizontally. You've got to go upwards a bit too. Why? Well, because you need ventilation, mainly so that the air is breathable and free of smoke if the tunnel needed evacuating. At the Montseny base tunnel, four ventilation shafts are being constructed, each 5.2 meters in diameter and 500 meters deep. That's more than the height of Shanghai's World Financial Center. They're made by drilling a narrow hole from the ground right down into the tunnel where a special cutting head is then attached. The result is what's called a raised boring machine, which excavates the shaft from the bottom upwards. There's a lot of work to do here, but then it's still early days. The line is set to finish in 2032. Now, if you've watched one or two of our videos on huge infrastructure projects, you'll know there's usually some kind of opposition, and the Leon Turin Railway is absolutely no different. But this one really has faced a lot of backlash over time. In Italy, a movement called No TAV has been campaigning against it for decades. Its place of origin? Well, the Sousa Valley. TAV stands for Treno Alta Velocita, meaning high-speed train. The groups organized several protests, some involving tens of thousands of people and others sparking clashes with police. They say the line will do too much damage to the land and that the money could be better spent on other services like hospitals. Although changes to the route have been made to address their concerns in the past, many remain firmly against the project. There's been resistance over in France too, with even the mayor of Lyon calling for a stop to the project. Opponents have criticized the environmental impacts, believe funds should be redirected towards the existing line, and claim millions of euros intended for rail infrastructure in the region has gone towards roads instead. Despite all this, with support continuing from both governments and the EU, the project is pushing ahead. I think this was a bad political choice to tout this project as a high-speed line, because it is not really. <laughs> as much as I think that there is a market for high-speed between Italy and France, it's not as big to justify a whole base tunnel. But if it's like it was done in Switzerland, the Gotter base tunnel was not done for the two three passenger trains per hour that they used it, but for the hundreds of tra freight trains per day that use it to go from northern Italy to Germany and reverse. Yes, it may have come under more pressure than normal, even for a high-speed railway, but the Leon Turin line is now picking up speed. And let's hope it's not another couple of decades before it completes. Promising lower carbon travel and trade, and providing a missing piece of Europe's transport puzzle, there are plenty of positives for both countries and the wider continent. 
The communities caught in the middle might not agree, but as a construction project, you probably won't find many more impressive or ambitious. You can learn more about this new mountain railway and the other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.